So, hello guys, including my new subscribers, which I've recently gained from this image, which was posted on Cheeseburger and Poker Memes. Um, if you want to make things like this, you're going to want to pay attention to this tutorial, because I'm going to be showing you how to animate them like this model here. Also, a few of you are critical about the animation in this one. I must point out it was a beta, it wasn't meant to be released at that point. And none of you noticed that this bowl here was CG as well, so points to me. Let's get started on how to animate your models and do a few other fancy things with armatures. So, here we have the model from our other tutorials, and if you haven't watched them, you should probably should click the link around here to watch them, because they are really helpful. And uh, last time we used this model, it had a problem with the head, didn't it? And um, when we moved this, that pendant and that whisker didn't move, so we're going to want to change that. Uh, we want to parent those two, those two features that wouldn't move, to this bone here, because it's the closest one. Now, for whatever reason, when we parented last time, it didn't do it, so we've got to do it manually now. I'll show you how to do that now. Uh, we just need to note down the name of the bone that we want it to be parented to. So, it's bone.004, as it says down here. The first bit's the name of the armature, which is just armature, and the second bit's the name of the bone, which is bone.004, point bone decimal 004. So, now we click on our model like that, and uh, we tab into it, press A to clear the current selection, and we go, as in the first tutorial, over here to the uh, object data thing where all the vertex groups are. Now, we want the one that says bone.004, which I think is probably somewhere around here after 3 but before 5, as 4 normally is. So now we've got that selected, we want to select all the vertices which are in this group. Now, bones work by basically saying is it in this vertex group, and if it is, this bone's going to move it. So we want to add the pendant thing up there and the whisker here to that group. So we do that like we did in the first tutorial, by uh, first going into a more, more visible thing, the wireframe thing. So we select more than just the uh, foreground, and then box around that, and just click it, box around that. It doesn't matter if you double select things that were already selected, they won't unselect or anything. And we want to do it with that top whisker here. So if we hit that, and that. And then we just hit assign here to assign those vertices to that bone and we can tab out and move into a solid point of view. Actually no, let's, let's go texture, let's go the full whack. And uh, if we click on that bone there, or even that bone there for the neck, we can click that and it will now stay with the armature. So our head is now fully moving the head and everything else and our ears still function and everything like that. They even move along, and that kind of thing. So, we've fixed broken armatures already. That was quick, that was quick, that was easy. So now we want to animate them. Now that is going to be a bit more tricky, but still not too difficult. So, let's get on to animating this model. We're going to need a few more windows to do this. In fact, we're only going to need one more. So if we right-click down here, split the area, and if we go to our selector thing here and we choose the dope sheet, this is the area that shows the keyframes for each bone and the frames that are actually running. Now the frame that we're on is shown down here, as well as down here, and down here, and down here. So if you're not sure what frame you're on, check there, or there, or there, and you'll find out pretty easily. So when, basically what happens when you animate something is you put a keyframe in on a frame, and then Ten frames later you'll put in another keyframe, and the computer can animate everything in between like that. So let's get on with animating our first action, it's going to be him nodding his head. So quite a simple one. So, we want to make an action for him. So if we go down here in the dope sheet, move that in a bit, we go down here in the dope sheet, we can see a thing over here. If we use the scroll wheel while we're hovering over this bit, by the way, we'll, we'll scroll left and right. So, hit the dope sheet thing here, and hit action editor. We are now in the action editor, so if we scroll a bit more, we'll see a list of actions. Or rather, we won't, because we haven't programmed any in yet. But we can make a new one by hitting this button here where it says new. And it'll say action as a default thing, but we're going to say our action is going to be him nodding his head once. So we'll set it to n o d for nod, hit enter. Okay, so now let's make sure we're on frame zero, and make sure we're on pose mode. And we want to make sure it records everything that we do on the frame that we do it on. So if we hit down here where it says the record button, automatic keyframe insertion, hit that. 
and this thing here will pop up. Now we also want to say what we want to record. Now I always put this at available because basically that means whatever we change it will add a keyframe for. If we don't change it, it won't add a keyframe. If we do, it will. So hit that to available. And we've got everything we need to animate him nodding his head. Except for one more thing which I'm going to say. If you were down here it says global. Change that. We want it to say gimbal. Now this will change, as you can see, that colour was that, and now it's that. That will change the coordinate system. So it will now follow the bone's movements instead of saying that up is always up, regardless if up for the bone is actually a bit to the left or a bit to the right. First keyframe we want to put in, that's just going to be his head upright. So we just click on the rotation tool once, click on any axis, and as you can see up here, it's made a keyframe on frame one, uh, on frame zero. If it wasn't on frame zero, I'd suggest you put it on frame zero. Now we can grab this keyframe by right clicking it and hitting the G button and moving it around like that. And as you can see, the yellow bar on here, which denotes keyframe, the yellow bar down there, uh, will move around to on the dope sheet. And you can only do that on the dope sheet, you can't do that on the uh, animation bar in the bottom. But for now, put that on zero and keep it there. Our next thing that we do when we nod our head is move our head slightly downwards. Now I'm going to say I'm going to do that on frame 15, because he's going to nod his head for about a second. So, we've now set our frame to 15 by just clicking on this dope sheet and moving that so that identified as 15. If you're struggling with that, by the way, you can zoom in and out on the dope sheet like that, and you can also move the frames around with the arrow keys on your keyboard. So, frame 15. We're going to select the red axis here, the red one, because that's the forwards and backwards one. And because we're on frame 15, it's going to record what we do next on frame 15. And in this case, I'm going to click that and nod his head. Just like that. That's all we're going to do. And let's just go back and have a look at that. So we're on frame 0. If we hit Alt-A, it'll play the animation so far. So Alt-A, he's put his head down. Got to put his head back up again, of course but we want it exactly where it was before, so it fits in with all the other animations and that kind of thing. So if we right click the first the first keyframe, either the top one or the bottom one, doesn't matter because the top one is a summary of everything below. So the top one will copy everything below, the bottom one will just copy that bone. And if we hit Shift D, we will copy it. And if we move our mouse, as you can see, it'll do that. If you get orange lines like that, that means it hasn't moved. So there's no real point of putting it in unless that's your point. So let's move that, let's put, move the duplicated one, we'll put it on frame, that frame there, that frame there. Frame 30 as it happens, perfect. Now if we hit Alt A, if we move to the front and hit Alt A, head goes down, head goes up. That looks like a decent nod, that does. So that is one nod, very well animated. If we move back, we'll see it a bit better. Let's look at it from several different angles. Alt A, what a nod, agreeing with me, yes. Excellent. So now we've just animated the nod of the head action, we're going to want to do another action. And this one is going to be a bit more complicated, it's going to be him waving. So, we just delete everything, all the keyframes on this action, by either selecting them all, hitting the A button, hitting delete. It'll do that. So if we hit new, down there, and we type wave, because this one's going to be him waving. Hit enter, and we've got our new action. So we've created a new wave action that's completely blank. And if we just move that bar in a bit so we can see better, we're now going to animate him waving. Now notice how when I click Alt A, the wave action has, uh, the uh, nodding action has seemingly disappeared. It's not, we've just hidden it for now over there where it says nod. So now for waving. Now for this one, we're going to use some fancy stuff called inverse kinematics. Sounds pretty cool. It basically means when you move something, everything else will follow it. Right now, if I choose the Move tool, the Transformation tool, and click on a bone and try and move it, hey, this happens. Don't want that. Don't want that at all. So if we go to Pose and choose Inverse Kinematics and click Add IK to Bone, we're going to do it without targets for now. You can do it to an object, but we're not going to do that for now. We're going to choose Without Targets. And if we open the Armature Constraints, the Bone Constraints thing up here, we'll see it's added a new constraint to this particular bone. Now we want to make it affect two bones back, so when we move this, we want it to also move two bones back, but in a kind of degrading fashion. So if we change the chain length to two, 
if we move it up and to the left a bit, it'll change the other one as well. So like, like a ragdoll, in fact, if I, can move, if I hit G, I can move it around like that, and we get a lot more ragdollish kind of behavior. Change the chain length to three, and we get the shoulder moving in there too. But uh, that's a bit weird, he looks, looks truly fabulous in that one, I guess. So if I right click off that, and uh, I'm gonna change that back to two, because that was a bit creepy. So now I've got both of those moving there. So for the first, for the first frame, as always, it's got to be absolutely clear, no location, no rotation. So pose, clear, transform, all of them, and on for the other bone as well. Pose, clear, transform, all of it. And then we're going to make sure each bone's got its own keyframe at the start. So make sure you're on zero, make a keyframe, make a keyframe, make a keyframe, make one for the shoulder too, just in case. Hell, everyone can, everyone can join in. So, now we've got our arm's first position. The next position is going to be him with his arm in the air. So let's make that on frame 15. And if we move this up and to the right a bit, like that, with the uh, movement tool down there, and we rotate it as well with the rotate tool, like that. There we go. Make sure you're still in gimbal, by the way. It does help things. We've now got our first bit of the animation. Boom. Easy. Looks quite natural, too. If you move across the timeline, you can move the animation forwards and backwards. Next one's going to be him actually waving. So let's put that at about frame 23, I guess. And move it a bit like that. And then move on to the next frame. Move it back like that. Move on to the next frame. Move it back like that. Move on to the next frame. And move it back like that. And then we want it to return to its original position. So we do the same thing we did last time which is select up here to select all of them and shift because we're selecting another one select that one too and we can go shift D to duplicate and we can do that now this time it's the wrong way around isn't it because that one was it going forwards we want it to go backwards now we want the arm to go from up top to back level so if we select the start of that selection kind of thing and we hit S, it will now scale. And of course, if we scale minus one, that means backwards. So if you hit minus one on your keyboard and hit enter, those have moved. It's moved inwards a bit, so let's grab it across and move it back there. Hope this isn't too complicated for you. Just If you don't understand, feel free to rewind and do it again. Now, if we run the animation with Alt A from the beginning, I'm lifting his arm, waving and putting it back down. Excellent, that's our wave action done. So we've done both of those animations so much easier than if we hadn't have got the armature or anything like that. So the next thing to do is combine the two of them and actually get them in one big animation because right now they're two separate actions and we want an entire animation. So we just go back to our window over here and we scroll across and we go to something called the NLA editor. So NLA editor on this thing down here, NLA editor. Now here we have our actions kind of thing. All our actions should be listed here. Unfreeze that. And uh, we have our wave imported already. So if we hit Alt A, it'll do the wave. Excellent. What if we want to insert our nod? We go to Add, Add Action Strip, and choose Nod. There we go. And as you can see, it's now added another kind of thing. If we make it a bit bigger, another track, so to speak, on this. Now, the beauty of this is, if they're not interleaving bones or anything, it will do them both at the same time. So if I just grab that, so the nod happens with G key, the nod happens mid of that, hit Alt A, it'll do both of them at the same time, which is just brilliant. And uh, we can, of course, add these over and over again with Shift-D. It's basically the same controls as you'd expect from the uh, other editor. And uh, Alt-A, you've got that kind of thing like that. Excellent! And there you have it, animation of armatures in Blender. Simple, easy, and incredibly effective. So, for my next tutorial, I will be showing you how to add those animations into the real world, like in the GIF you saw previously, and in this clip here, which I took travelling through a road in London when it was closed because, I don't know, the government were on strike or something. 
yeah, had a lot of free time for that one. But anyway, yes, if you'd like to see that, make sure you subscribe in the link below. Or, if I've already uploaded it, it'll be on a button kind of up here. Uh, let's go back to the previous tutorials, if you've not done them yet, but you probably need to to understand what I'm saying, you'll want a button up here. Uh, subscribe to me with a button down here, and have a look at some of my Deviant artworks on the button thing down here. Excellent. Leave your review in the comments of how I did, and if you want to know how to do anything, leave that in the comments too. I'll probably mention it in the next video. So, uh, until next time, guys, see ya, bye, peace out.